Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Walsall campus of the University of Wolverhampton. My name is Richard Medcalf. I'm the director of the Institute of Human Sciences at the university, and it's my pleasure to host today's event on behalf of the university, and I'm delighted to welcome everyone watching us online this afternoon. We're coming to you live from our Human Movement Lab at the university to celebrate the partnership between the University of Wolverhampton and the British Judo Association. And despite not being able to host this event on campus like we would ordinarily do, I'm delighted that so many of you have chosen to join us online. To provide us with the formal welcome to proceedings and to give some background to the partnership, we'll start with a few words from our Vice-Chancellor, Professor Jeff Layer. Thank you, Richard, and uh, it's with great pleasure that we're here today um, celebrating a particular achievement. And, you know, our partnership with British Judo goes back 12 years. A partnership that's based on working together, thinking together, in some instances of, of student athletes living together, and making sure that we work as a team for the benefit of the community, our students, our athletes, and the sport of judo. Uh, those 12 years have meant that in that partnership, what we've done together is to create the home of British judo. And we're delighted that this is your place and this is where you belong. And we're extending that relationship even further. We're improving facilities together so that athletes have better training facilities. We're looking at a stronger and even closer relationship. You know, one of the things that I really pick up on as I walk around the campus is the impact that having Olympians and Paralympians on the campus for our students to see, our students to look up to, but not just our students, the thousands of young school children who come here every year to think about their futures and to think about how they can engage in learning and what their aspirations are for the future. And they see their he heroes in the Paralympics and Olympians. That's all around raising our aspirations. It enables us to develop very applied research into new techniques, new developments. And we've got some wonderful facilities here on the Walsall campus, which we've invested in over the years. To, en to enable activity such as climate chambers. It also means that our teaching is underpinned by the reality of what life is like in the elite sports. Our sports study students can see that. Our sports science students can see that. Our sports coaching students can see that. Our sports therapy students can see that. Because it's about their world and it's about what makes a difference. In the university's strategic plan, we have a vision for the year 2030. What life will be like? And that very much focuses on place and our student experience. And this partnership is part of that place because this is the home of British judo for years to come. And it's had the impact of growing our sports courses over the last few years. And that partnership with British Judo is core to our strategic aim. We're proud also of all the athletes who combine sport and study. It's not easy, Just particularly at those very elite levels, those high-level training programs, that work that has to be undertaken. But, but when you look at it, if you're a Judo athlete and you want to study, in higher education, then this is the only place to be because here you have the partnership, you have the facilities, and you have the environment. We're agreeing a new 12-year agreement, partnership agreement, that covers the next three Olympics and Paralympic cycles. We've recently just appointed the London 2012 bronze medalist, Ben Quilter, as head of judo. Welcome, Ben. You're part of a new breed of people who start university life in the middle of a lockdown, um, where you have less access to facilities, but welcome, and I hope you enjoy it. 
Our new athlete facilities, which will come within the Judo Center of Excellence, are part of that new partnership. And our extension that we're opening today solidifies Walsall as a place for elite sport. And we th also thank Walsall Council for the work that they've done in enabling us to take this forward. Finally, it'll be unusual, it'll be different. It'll be something that people have never experienced before. But I wish all the athletes, coaches and support team all the best for the Tokyo Olympics and Paralympics. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. On Monday this week, the British Judo Association proudly announced the six strong team of athletes who will represent Great Britain at the Olympic Games, including two students from the University of Wolverhampton. The Paralympic Judo team will be announced in August, so keep an eye out for that in due course. But for now, let's take a look at the Olympic squad in action.
Our next speaker is Ronnie Sayers. Ronnie was elected chair of the board of the British Judo Association in 2017. Ronnie is also chairman of Judo Scotland and has inv been involved in judo for over 40 years, competing at various levels in juniors, seniors and masters competitions. Ronnie. Thank you. Uh, it's wonderful to be here today at the University of Wolverhampton to send off our Olympic and Paralympic teams. 2009 is certainly a long-lasting partnership with the university. It's also been a very fruitful and rewarding partnership as we have established our training centre, the programmes within it, and now we've progressed further. And um, I must say they are very amiable and uh, useful partners and hosts. And I think uh, I can say that we've got a very strong working relationship, which works to both our benefits. I would like to recognise the hard work uh, that our BJA performance team has put in since the start of the pandemic to try to prepare an Olympic team under very, um, very, very trying and difficult circumstances. Uh, this, the suspension of the IJF's qualification programme, uh, the World Judo Tour, obviously had massive impacts upon um, both the physical and psychological um, state of our fighters and the fighters have endured now 15, 16 months of uncertainty uh, you know, as, they, as they prepared for the games you know, and they, you know, I cannot stress how difficult that has been f for the fighters themselves and they really they got and they deserved the backup of a fantastic preparation team from the BJA's um, performance uh, leadership team under Nigel Donoghue We've got 10 fighters who are uh, competing in Tokyo in the Olympic and Paralympics, and we are very hopeful, very hopeful of securing at least two medals. Medals for Great Britain, medicals, medals for the British Judo Association, and medals for the University of Wolverhampton. I'm not going to say much more, but I'm, I'm, really, I'm really glad to come down today because I'm now going to see the enhanced training facilities that have been developed uh, with the university, the physical changes, the, um, the enhanced um, athlete uh, welfare and um, uh, preparation facilities and the physio facilities. So I'm really hopeful that this marks, a, again, a deepening and an enhancement of the facilities going forward and uh, our partnership goes forward. Uh, not just to the next cycle, but to Los Angeles and beyond. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ronnie. And as Ronnie has just said, one of the reasons we're hosting this celebration of partnership today is to recognise the opening of our new and extended athlete facilities at the University of Wolverhampton. Unfortunately, we can't host in-person tours for very obvious reasons, but I'm very grateful that two of our university students, Jemima and Kelly, have pre-recorded a tour of the facilities for us today. Hi, my name's Jemima. Hi, I'm Kelly. And we're going to give you a tour of the British Judo Centre of Excellence and the new extension and the new graphics. Whatever. This is our performance gym. This is a gym specially designed to get the best out of our performance and strength. So we do gym and rehab sessions, sometimes conditioning as well. This is our PB board, so everyone knows what everyone's working on. And we push each other. Yeah, we can all compete against each other and get the best out of each other and aim for higher. Here's our brand new coach's office, which is way bigger. We knocked through the wall. And there's Kate over there working. Very hard. <laughs> Here's some of our um, brand new graphics, what we got done. The We Are GB Judo. And on the other side, it's got the best we can be, which is one of our GB Judo Way trademarks.
So this whole building is brand new. And this is our brand new graphic design on the wall on the left. And then on the right, we've got our GB Judo. Yeah, all our GB Judo weight values and trademarks. Go through them. So this one is Will to Win. Good vibes. And then if we come through here, this is the women's changing room. Again, it's got all the brand new graphics on the wall and our best we can be. And then showers through here, so we can now shower after training. And toilets, brand new. So this is a great new positive thing for us. It will allow us after training to get a shower before we go into the gym or before we go home, which is all big, great help. And then when yeah, we're at and it owners, gives us yeah. space and privacy to uh, come and get changed or uh, see a physio without um, interruptions. Yeah, and then at ONST, it's a bigger space that everyone can get changed and there's no queuing for the toilet, which is... A big help we can go to the boys yeah so we'll just check there's no boys in but here is the men's changing room <laughs> that's pretty much the same layout here we've got the toilets and then the showers again this is going to be great for ONST and when we've got foreign countries here to come into train because it just allows everyone a little bit more privacy. Yeah, a bit more space if we have a lot of visitors or foreign countries coming to train, so that's really good. And this is our new and improved physio room. So before our physio room was really small and cramped but this gives us a lot more space and there's a private doctor's office next to it if you need to have some privacy and yeah it's just a, a lot more space if you need to see a physio or do some rehab in a bit more privacy so that's, yeah it's really good space for us. This also gives us room to have well, there's two beds, so two people at once, so um, it's just less waiting around and being more proactive when we're at training. And then finally, we'll show you the dojo. What's been, girls? It's good. And here's Nigel. He's Nigel, performance director. <laughs> good morning. Thank you to Jemima and Kelly for the tour of the new facilities and we hope to one day be able to have a look around them ourselves of course. Now we had hoped to have a number of athletes with us in the room here but due to Covid restrictions and protocols ahead of their travels we've taken the decision not to mix groups on campus today so by the magic of television and for the next um, portion of today's celebration event. We're going live about 30 yards in that direction to the dojo in the centre of excellence for a question and answer session with some of the athletes. And for this portion of the event, I'm handing over the reins to judo legend and head of performance operations, Karen Roberts. Karen, over to you. Thanks, Richard. Uh, before we start having any conversation here, we just want the athletes to introduce themselves to the audience back there. So I'm going to hand over to Chelsea. I'm Chelsea Giles, uh, I fight under 52s and I will be a part of the Olympic team. Uh, I'm Lucy Renshaw, I fight under 63s and I will also be a part of the Olympic team. Gemma Howell, 70 kilos and part of the Olympic team. Uh, my name is Dan Powell, uh, I'm under 81 kilos and I'll be taking part in the pal <laughs> <laughs> I'll be part of the Paralympic team. Hi, I'm Chris Skelly, I'm under 100 kilos, and I'm a Paralympic fighter. 
Jack Hodgson, plus 100 kilos, Paralympic fighter. I'm Elliot Stewart, under 90 kilos, and I'm a, Paralymp I'm a Paralympic fighter. Thanks, team. So, Jamie, you've been working hard this morning. How is the final preparation going for the Olympic Games? Uh, well, the final preparation started this morning, like Karen just said. Um, the work's rarely been done, so we've got another five days uh, up till next Friday, and then we're, we're off. So, like I said, all the final preparation is just putting icing on the cake, really. Like I said, everything's been done. We've been back training for a year, doing lots of competitions, so they're ready to go. Ready to go, that sounds great. Gemma, you've had the experience of London 2012, a very exciting experience for you, going to your second Olympic Games. What piece of advice would you be offering these first-time Olympians uh, to your right-hand side here? Uh, just that I gave it everything I possibly could for London. Obviously, I didn't end up on the top of the podium like I like to. So make sure you enjoy every second of being in Tokyo and enjoy the journey because that's also a massive part of the experience. Thanks, Gemma. And I suppose you guys are having these conversations all the time anyway, so I'm sure you're talking about it. Lucy, what expectations do you have for your first time Olympics? Um, going to the Olympics, I really want to enjoy the experience, especially with a strong team around me. But um, I don't think you go to any competition not wanting to perform your best and get a medal. So that's what I'm hoping for. But yeah, I definitely just want to enjoy the experience. We really do hope it's the experience that you're looking for. And I mean, Chelsea, you've probably watched a lot of Olympic Games over the years. What's been your standout moment from Olympic Games, whether or not that's judo or any other sport? Uh, my favourite moment is watching Sally Conway win a medal um, because I've been able to travel the world with her and I just, I know that she trains so hard and that's where I want to be. Chelsea, Chelsea, thanks for that. And it leads nicely on to Kate, who was out there in Rio when, um, when Sally won that medal. And also every Olympic Games before that, until 1992, if I'm thinking correctly. So over those Olympic Games, um, you've got a lot of experience, Kate. Uh, this Olympic Games is going to be different, we know that. What do you think is going to be the key difference for this Tokyo Olympics? I think the key difference is obviously everybody getting on the mat safe and sound, obviously COVID times. Um, but the massive take from it is that don't let that distract from the experience as every one of them have just said. It's about the experience and there won't be an opening or a closing ceremony for the guys because they have to leave the leave competition two days afterwards. But just enjoy every minute and take the experience for what it is. At the end of the day, all three of you now, you're Olympians and that's what it's about. You know, you can, you, you've can you got that for life. Thanks, Kate. Just one last question to the three of you. Who's, who's going to be left at home cheering you on? Who are going to be your key supporters back at home? Um, <laughs> I think my dad's going to be more nervous than I am, <laughs> but I know uh, a lot of them are going to be watching, even though it's early in the morning. Yeah, all my family will be up watching, but my mum will be the most scared. <laughs> <laughs> um, half my family are going to be watching it from France, and it sounds nearly more exciting than the Olympics, so I almost want to be with them watching too. <laughs> but yeah, everyone will be very excited. Thank you very much to all of our Olympic team, and we've got the opportunity to speak to our Paralympic team as well now, just behind us. Ian, um, as you take this Paralympic team in, into their final push, these guys will be getting on the plane in a week's time. How does your focus change as we see this final, final push towards the Paralympics. I mean, it's cool that they're going to warm up Tokyo for us, you know, ready for us to go and uh, do the business when we go. But um, no, the place is absolutely buzzing. Um, everything's really good. The training's going well all the way through. So we've just come off the back of a really successful competition block. So um, the guys are just coming back in training now, going into their last phases. And the whole team are now are all wrapped around the Paralympic team to make sure that um, we can go best performed and go do what we need to do when we get out to Tokyo. Thanks, John Z. Um, just want to take the opportunity, whilst we've got you here, we've got two past students of the University of Wolverhampton who are in that Paralympic team over there. And we just wanted to know how, how has that actually helped you in your Paralympic journey and your student journey? Um, for me, personally, um, the communication between the university and um, the centre where we train here is being, was um, exceptional. And if it wasn't for that communication and the understanding between both, um, I don't think I'd be here today in this last, like John's just said, in this last drive towards the Paralympic Games. Um, yeah, they both sides bent over backwards to help me get um, the best out of my university degree and my training here on the mat. Uh, to echo Elliot's word, essentially, 
they were absolutely fantastic, especially going into my first games um, when I was right in the middle of doing my university degree. Um, they did everything they could. They gave me the time off that I needed to, the support around um, the games and the training that I needed to do to be able to complete my degree. So they were exceptional. I can't thank them enough. That's brilliant. Thank you both for sharing that. And actually, it, it links in well to bring in Nigel Donoghue now, our performance director. <laughs> Grab your mic. You, um, that partnership that we just heard, two, two of former students with the university and British Judo, I think we've seen that again in this year where we're going into this Olympic Games with a brand new part of our facility, which you know we've just seen the tour of. What difference does that make, this partnership that we've got and, and the new extension? Yeah, well, firstly, Karen, we've been here since um, November 2013, and the relationship with the university over the last seven or eight years has grown and grown. The facilities we've got to begin with, from a training perspective, are absolutely fantastic. We have a brilliant dojo, probably the best in the country, and you know, with the, with the size of the mat and the sprung floor and, and a fantastic gym. And a, and a place in around the facility to, uh, to house our coaching team and science and medicine team. But now that we've got the extension with the changing room facilities and the, the new um, medical room, it just takes the whole facility to a whole, whole new level. And it just means that we, we enhances the, the, the environment um, to become a you know, truly elite performance environment. And the branding around, around the centre as well, it just brings the whole, whole uh, environment to life. And we want this to be, be the home of British Judo for past, present, and the future, and that's where we, we, that's what we're working towards in terms of creating um, a fantastic performance environment with great success at these Olympic and Paralympic Games, but also it's to set the standard and raise the bar for the next generation coming through for Paris and beyond. Thanks, Nigel. And, and to focus on the present, I just want to wish the imminent Olympic team travelling off next week the best of luck, and obviously the final push for the Paralympics. I hope it all goes well. Thanks, Richard. Thank you, Karen. Thanks very much for doing that for us. Great to hear those views from the athletes. Very grateful for all of your, your time this afternoon. And I hope we've kept the next portion of proceedings a surprise. And we've got one last video for you. And this one is a special surprise for our athletes. We've got messages of good luck from Sally Monday, the chief executive of UK Sport, and perhaps some more familiar faces to some with messages from the friends and families of those who are traveling to Tokyo. Hello British Judo, I'm Sally Monday, the Chief Executive at UK Sport. I just want to take this opportunity to wish all of our Olympic and Paralympic athletes in the British Judo team the best of success this summer. We're incredibly proud of you, we're really excited to see you compete. Tokyo is going to be a different Games, but it's going to be your Games. So we hope that you have an incredible time and are able to fulfil your ambitions and like I said, we're really looking forward to seeing you compete. Travel well, travel safe, and go and represent Great Britain as we know that you will. Good luck. Good luck, Chelsea! Every second, Gemma. You can't imagine how proud I am. <laughs> Two Olympics. Ashley and the whole Team GB Judo team, well done on the qualification. You've put all the hard work in. Everyone is behind you. Now seize the moment and get those medals. Back together again. I just want to say to you how many times you've made me cry for pleasure as well. And <laughs> what an awesome young lady you are. So I, every second we'll be there with you in Japan, but not there with you. The good luck, Gemma, okay? We know how brilliant you'll be. Good luck. Okay. Hey Nettie, a message from Holland this time. I'm so proud of you for making it to the Olympics. And I'm so happy for you, you get to experience this for the second time and to go for your big goal on Olympic medal. All the other people have to stay at home, but I'll be right there by your side to cheer you on. And I've got all the trust in the world for you and I'm so happy we get to do this together. And see you in Tokyo. Hi Charles, just want to wish you all the best for the Olympics. So very proud of you and what you've achieved. What an experience for you. Enjoy it. Hi Charles, just wanted to wish you well for the Olympics. We're all thinking of you and rooting for you back home. Uh, sending lots of love. Go Chelsea! Go Chelsea!
Hey Gemma, just want to let you know, Texas, we're thinking about you. Good luck and congratulations. If you win, I'll totally send you some Hershey's, but just want to let you know, we're all rooting for you here in Texas, baby and all. Well, I can't believe the Tokyo Olympics is just around the corner. Well, it's been a pretty hectic 18 months getting there. I mean, with all the COVID restrictions, the injuries, the, the lack of competitions, but I've got every faith in you now that you'll do the job. And we are wishing you all the very best of luck. One thing's for certain, although we can't be there with you in Tokyo, we will be in front of that television on the 29th of July shouting you on. So come on, Nat, give it some Welsh welly. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Nat. You've, you've worked so hard over the years from a very, very young age, I think from the age of eight. Um, we've taken you various places uh, to build up your confidence when you were still even in primary school. And uh, you've, you've always really give it 100%. And um, you really deserve this. And I just wish that everything will go according to plan and all the luck in the world. Let's hope everything goes well and you get on that podium. Good luck, Ned. Good luck. <laughs> Hi, Lucy. I bet you're shocked to see me. You have made me and your dad so proud over the years. To see you reach your childhood dream is amazing. Even though dad isn't with us, I know we will be looking down on you and beaming with pride. You kept your promise to him, worked hard, never give up and always give 100% in everything you do. I am devastated I can't join you to watch in, to in Tokyo, but we will all be rooting for you at all. Good luck, Good luck, Good luck. Good luck. Good luck Thank you to everybody who, who contributed to that set of videos. I hope they were enjoyed um, over in the dojo as much as they were here. That was really great to see. Thank you, everybody. Whilst I've got the opportunity, I also want to share another announcement with, with everybody today, and I'm really proud of this announcement. It cements further the partnership between the University of Wolverhampton and the British Judo Association for many years to come. As of this summer, in August 2020, the BJA head office will be moving on to our Walsall campus at the university. And for the first time ever, the performance team and the head office will be co-located in one physical space. We really do look forward to welcoming the team behind the team onto campus, and, and I can't wait to see what benefits that will bring, both to British Judo and to the University of Wolverhampton. We're really proud that we've been able to develop that relationship further, and we look forward to seeing what can happen next. Five years ago, we hosted an event before the Rio Games, and that was a fantastic send-off for everyone who competed in those Olympics and Paralympics. Sadly, we haven't been able to match that today ahead of Tokyo, but I want to place on record my commitment that before athletes go to the next Olympic Games and all of those in future, we will be holding events to celebrate our partnership between the two organizations. I'm sure everyone here in the room and online will join me in wishing our Judo Olympians and Paralympians all the very best in Tokyo. We're now going to formally open the extension to the Centre of Excellence, and I'm delighted that we are again joined by Jeff and Ronnie, who will cut the ribbon to officially open the new facilities. I'm delighted to welcome the Chair of British Judo, Ronnie Sayers, to formally open the extension and the development of the new partnership with the University of Wolverhampton, and certainly to be here with so many great athletes. Ronnie. Uh, thank you very much, Jeff. It's, it is my great pleasure to, to be here to celebrate both our partnership, uh, our Olympic, the send-off of our Olympic and Paralympic team and the opening of our enhanced training facility uh, on the uh, Walsall campus of the University of Wolverhampton. So without further ado, I'm going to now cut the ribbon. Thank you.
Thank you very much, Ronnie. My, my prayers to the gods of technology have worked and everything seems to have run really smoothly there. Thank you, everyone. From the home of British Judo in Walsall to the home of Judo in Japan, I want to close our event by wishing all athletes and coaches the very best of luck from everybody at the University of Wolverhampton. Thank you to everybody who's been involved in the event this afternoon, to our speakers, to our students and staff, to our friends and family who provided the content for that video, and of course to the team behind the scenes. Thank you all for joining us.